everybody. Um, in case anybody is new, this is not a standard podcast episode. This is my second designer notebook vlog. Um, I record um, a short bit of video to go with um, my designs that I publish. And this one is to tell you all about the Jackson's Bay Cowl. So I'm releasing this on the day that the pattern becomes available on Ravelry. So if it's Friday, you can go and buy the pattern. <laughs> Um, quick introduction. My name is Zoe. You can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram as Pins and Needles UK. And my patterns are available to buy through the Ravelry website. I'll leave links to everything down below. Um, if you have already signed up to my newsletter, um, by the time this video goes live, you will have received an email with a 10% discount code for use in the Ravelry store. So make sure you go and check your inboxes or maybe your promotions subfolder to make sure you take advantage of that. So the Jackson's Bay Cowl, there's two different versions. This is option A, and this is knitted in Owl About Yarn, Hour and Weight Yarn. It's a, basically it's a one of a kind colorway. Um, it was sort of a test run for her fast lane colorway. And as you can see, there's bands of moss stitch at the top and the bottom, and then I use this pleat stitch, super squishy stitch, um, to form the folds in the fabric. And I'll give you a sneaky peek of the inside because the insides are always interesting too. On the inside, it makes this lovely honeycomb pattern. I don't know if you can quite see that. Maybe, mm, sort of. Anyway, so this is option A. So it's a fairly short height cowl. Um, and I had about 17 grams left over from a 100 gram skein. Um, this is knitted in the round, all in one piece. It's one continuous knit. Um, and if you haven't tried pleat stitch before, it's a very basic stitch. It's basically stocking stitch. And then every now and again, you do the pleat stitch, which isn't difficult at all. Option B which is the mid-height cowl, and this comes with a button placket. So you can see it comes up a little bit taller, just sort of covers your chin, and it's a fully functioning button placket. So you can have it dangling open like that for a bit more space, or if it's really cold, you can button it right up. And so you're nice and warm like that, you know, rubber bank, whatever you feel. So there we go. Now this one, is knitted in one of the new um, West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. This is the Croft Shetland Tweed in the colourway Halo, which is colourway number 754. Um, I bought this from the lovely Eisler of Brit Yarn. Again, I'll leave links down below. Um, and this is a slightly longer cowl, and I had 10 grams left of that skein. So it's less than one skein for either cowl. Um, both are a super simple knit. Now for this one, you knit it exactly the same as option A up until the point where you start the placket. So this section is knit in the round and then this top section you start working back and forth. Um, and from this point on, every row of the pattern is written out for you. So it's super easy to follow. Um, I have recorded a little bit of video which I'll insert in a minute that just takes you on a short walk down to Jackson's Bay on Barry Island which is where I live and um, I've lived in Wales for about 19 years now 18 years and there's an interesting word in the Welsh language um, and that word is hiraith and it doesn't have an English translation but it means a sense of longing for your homeland and I absolutely love living on Barry Island and I really feel part of the community here. And so I wanted to do a collection of knitting patterns called Hiraith, um, all about the place where I live and this pattern is the first. So, as I said, I'll pop the video in in a minute, but um, I just wanted to quickly show you my notes because I know some of you were interested in this from last time. So I've got my designer's notebook and you can see I started designing this in August um, and I knew pretty quickly that I wanted to use Jenny's yarn, you can see it at the top, and then this is my pencil sketch and you can see I sort of I wanted to have these 
um, I don't know what the word is, like concertina sections to the yarn um, that echo the rock formations in the cliffs of Jackson's Bay. Um, so I started doing sort of a brief outline on this page and I sort of had to knit the samples and write the instructions down as I go. So here you can see my scribbly instructions. The shorter one was a bit simpler. <laughs> so those were my working notes for the pattern. So I will pop in the video here so you can actually see the Jackson's Bay that these um, cows are based on and I'll see you in a minute. So, so I'm standing on the green from Barry Island. It's a super sunny day. And there is the sea. It's an absolutely gorgeous clear day and you can see all the way across to Somerset and Western Supermare. And those two islands are Flat Holm and Steep Holm. Now we've got the harbour just here with the lighthouse and then Jackson's Bay is just down there. So I often walk out here with doing the dog. And if I can do it without making you feel too poorly, I will show you the secret little path. The next little town that you can see is Penarth, which is um, still in the Vale of Glamorgan where I live, but it's a posh town. The next town over. And here's the path. It leads all the way down past the yacht club. Can you see the little yachts in the harbour down there? Then you curve round until you get down to Jackson's Bay. And this is part of the Wales Coastal Path. And I think it's all open, so you can walk the entire west coast of Wales, south and west coast of Wales, right along the path. And you hear all the birds in the trees. I think they're all out. You can't tell from the camera, but this is on an unbelievable slope. I mentioned in the pattern for the Jackson's Bay Cow that there's cliffs and you're basically walking down past these cliffs. And can you see there's the allotments, there's a whole run of allotments. Now I know nothing about gardening, but I reckon that if you are this close to the sea, it must be pretty difficult to grow anything. There's a slightly better view of the harbour. Can I zoom in on the lighthouse for you? There you are, look. And you can just see down there is the start of Jackson's Bay. The tide is as far out as it can get at the moment. Just coming towards the bottom of the path now. We are nearly there. And this is Barry Yacht Club, which always cracks me up. various boats and things there. I don't know much about boats I'm afraid. Now it is super sunny so hopefully my phone camera will be able to cope with the southern sunshine. It's still cold mind but it is beautiful sunshine. I've got one of these beat information boards and you can see from the map just how sheltered Jackson's Bay is. And here is the arm of the harbour wall. It used to have a train track along the top of it, and if you can still see the lines in the grass, to help unload the coal, I think. So that's quite sweet. And then there is the glory that is Jackson's Bay. The best view of the bay um, and the side that I took the pictures from for the pattern is actually the other side. But I wanted you to get the full experience. Now it says there, beware of falling rocks. So here are the gorgeous cliffs and you can see that they start getting much redder over there. And although they're covered in beautiful greenery, which does help keep the rocks under control, you can get falling rocks. So when I come down here with the children, we never sit under the cliff edge and it always makes me nervous when I see other people doing it because it doesn't have to be a very big rock 
to do you a bit of damage. Anyway, so here we are, Jackson's Bay. Now, Jackson's Bay, or rather Barry Island, I think, has the second highest tide difference in the world. But I think the highest tide differential is a bay in Canada. I can't remember the name of it. But you can see, there's the arm of the harbour wall, and that yellow line is how high the seawater comes up. <laughs> and there's another dog enjoying the beach. So the middle bit, that bit down there, can get seriously muddy. And um, if you're not careful when you bring the kids down, they literally end up covered in this sticky black mud. But at the top here, gorgeous golden sands. And there are my cliffs. So you can just start to see here where the stripes start on the cliff. Can you see it comes right down to the sand there? And then the further along you go, the greater the colour change in the rocks. And by the time you get down to the far end, it's very obvious indeed. So this is the far side of the beach. And by this point, you can really see patterns and the different colours in the cliff wall. And this is the bit where I took the photographs for the pattern. And there's a chap that walks his uh, sheepdog down here and he climbs all the way up to that shelf bit there. And you have to throw a tennis ball for him and he comes flying off the top. Puts my heart in my mouth every time. So I hope you can see where I got my idea for the pleat stitch in the Jackson's Bay cow. The way these lines run together, the way you get sort of divots in the different colours like there is there. And in a minute I'll turn around and show you the cowl I'm wearing. But also there you can get an idea of the colours, why I particularly liked the Owl About yarn, Aaron, with the orange colours and the little flecks of green that I found in the West Yorkshire Spinners yarn for option B of the cow. There's always people walking their dogs down here. It's never empty, this beach. And then here we are on the far side. Now that is the start of the Clements Collie Walk, which is another continuation of the Welsh Coastal Path. And if I spin you slowly back round so you don't feel too sick, is Jackson's Bay. So it really is a gorgeous, cosy little nook of a beach. And I hope that you feel that the Jackson's Bay cowl captures a little bit of that. I really hope you enjoyed that little peek at Jackson's Bay. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I will be doing a giveaway on Instagram for my last skein of this yarn. I bought two because I wasn't quite sure how much I was going to need. So if you head over to my Instagram account, I'm Pins and Needles UK on there, um, check out the giveaway post on there, follow the instructions and you could be lucky enough to win a skein of this yarn and a free copy of my pattern. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my little designer notebook. Um, if you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up and click subscribe. And if you're interested in buying the pattern, do please head over to find me on Ravelry. I'm Pins and Needles UK on there, or you can search for Zoe Carter Designs. Um, you'll find the pattern on my Ravelry Designer page. You can download it from there and it costs £4 plus VAT. If you live in Europe, you have to pay the VAT. I don't get that money, the government does. If you live abroad, it will just be £4 in whatever your currency is according to the exchange rate. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy knitting your Jackson's Bay cowl. And if you do purchase the pattern, I would love to see the pictures of your works in progress or your finished objects. So either give me an ear burn on Ravelry or put it up on Instagram and use hashtag Jackson's Bay cowl so I can enjoy all your lovely finished objects. I will see you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.